I do not know what this hair is doing though. Sir, can you like calm down and go straight down instead of like out in the abyss? Really liked learning about um Laszlo. I know all it and it's not the happiest book. It's about a girl. I think it's about a girl. It's about a it's not she's not a human. Uh, it's not the happiest of books. It's about a human. No. Uh we follow our main character, Yedu. Yedu? Yetu. I am really bad at names. Hello everybody, my name is Kelsey and we're about to get very, very nerdy with some hyped books. So it's a, we're doing another secret TBR, themed TBR, it's not really a secret TBR, but like a themed video, and I thought I would do it on hyped books. So I've seen a bunch of different people do things like, are these books worth the hype? And I liked the idea of that, except for the fact that I am awful with hyped books because I usually like all of them. If it's hyped and I've read it, I usually like it. It's very rare that I don't. I'd say like 90% of the time I like the books. So I thought we would do a kind of twist on that and do hyped books out of my comfort zone or books that I'm interested in but I'm hesitant about for whatever reason. So that's what this video is going to be. I will go through the books that I am planning on reading. There are going to be five in this video. I have no idea when this video is going to come out so you'll see it when you see it. But I We'll tell you the five because I'm going to chapter them down below. If you want to see like a specific book, I'll leave them chaptered down below. But that is the plan for this video. I have two books physically with me. Like I own two books. I have one on ebook and then I have two more that are at the library. Like I just put out a request at my library for them. So I'm waiting for that to come through and hopefully I'll be able to go pick those up in the next couple of days because I think one of those is ones that I'm gonna wanna start this with. But let me just tell you the books that I'm planning on reading. So these you will have seen because I've definitely hauled them before. But the first one, not that I'm gonna read, the first one that like, there's no order to this. The first one I'm gonna show you is actually A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kimmerer. This is a fantasy, I believe it's YA, a YA fantasy retelling of Beauty and the Beast. And our main character, what is her name? Harper has cerebral palsy. So I don't know why I've put off reading this. This is one that like a lot of, I've heard mixed reviews. Like if people love this, they love this book. And if they don't, they like despise it. And this sounds like my thing. Like it's a Beauty and the Beast retelling. Love Beauty and the Beast. Love retellings. It's got, I've heard some good rep. I don't obviously know, um, but I've heard the rep for cerebral palsy is good in this book. So we love rep in books especially something that like I don't think I've ever seen in a book besides this one do so that's good to have rep so like all of these things are great but there's something that keeps holding me back and I'm not sure what it is like I don't have an explanation um but I wanted to read this book I think it was on my mind because like the third one in this series came out this year and everyone was talking about the series again I'm excited to give it a try and see what happens um, the other physical book that I own is actually The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. Now, this book is stunning. I still can't get over this incredibly gorgeous UK cover. This one is one that I'm like super hesitant about because of the author. I've read, what was that book? A Darker Shade of Magic, the first in that series by V.E. Schwab, and I didn't love it, but it was super, super hyped. So I'm wondering if the hype got to me, and I'm really worried that that's going to happen with this book because this book is super hyped. But I've heard it's not like anything she's written before and so like that gives me some hope and I know it's gonna give me some feelings so I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, I don't really know much about it besides it's this girl named Addie LaRue who makes a deal to live forever but people will forget her so she doesn't ever stay in one place. She's kind of a wanderer and no one remembers her. Like she'll meet someone and then once she leaves the room and comes back they've already forgotten who she is. But she walks into a bookshop and the guy who was working there remembers her. And I believe it's their love story. But it's all about like loneliness and stuff. So it's supposed to like hit you hard. But I'm nervous because of 
my experience with Vicky Joao in the past, although I've only been one book. Like, I haven't read anything else besides that one book by her. So I'm willing to give this a shot. I'm a little nervous about this, but that's the point of this video. The ebook that I have is actually The Deep by Rivers Solomon, which is a very small, almost like a novella book, and it's based on a song, if I remember correctly, um, that was performed by Davy Diggs and somebody else. And I'm nervous about this one only because, like, it was, it's super hyped as far as, like, it's supposed to be really, really impactful for its size because it's about, it's like a fantasy story that follows the children of slaves that were thrown off ships um, as part of, like, the slave trade. And they, over the years, have, like, kind of morphed into mermaid-like creatures. And it follows this woman, I think she's a woman, this follows this person who is the keeper of memories and so every single year after like she keeps it so the entire clan or like her group of people doesn't have to but like her life is very painful because of that so I think it's going to be a very emotional read um I'm hesitant because it's so hyped because I'm afraid there's going to be this extra layer underneath that like I'm not going to quite get and I want to get as much as I can out of this book because I heard it's really impactful um but it's really thin it's a good I think that's a good idea to have a thin book in here because all of the other ones are very thick. So gotta thin one in because I'm gonna need help with this. One of the books that I'm gonna pick up from the library soon, hopefully, fingers crossed, is Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. So this one I'm hesitant about because I've heard the writing is beautiful, which is great. I love me some beautiful writing. I'm hesitant because like I'm afraid it's gonna be too lyrical for me, but I don't know, because I've never read anything by Lainey Taylor, but I've heard people really, really love this book. It's also a duology, so, like, it's not too much to be invested in if I do enjoy it, which is good. But I also, like, just want to know, because, like, everyone talks about this. This is, like, a super hyped series, I think, and I don't know anything about it, except for that I think there's someone in there that's blue. But I do know it follows our main character, and, like, he works in a library of sorts. And there's this town or city called, like, Weep or something like that. And everyone thinks it's a myth, but then people from Weep come because they need help for some reason. And he decides to go with them. I've wanted to try her writing for a while to see if it is my thing. But I'm nervous about this because it's so hyped. But I'm going to give it a shot. So we'll see. That's another one I'm going to read. And then the last one I'm planning on reading is Middle Game by Seanan McGuire. And I think this is the one that I'm going to start off this video with because I love Shauna McGuire's writing. Um, her Wayward Children series is like one of my favorite series. I am obsessed with that. I'm obsessed with her writing in those books. And so I'm curious to see how she's going to do a different setting because I've only read that series by her. And this one follows two siblings who have magical powers. One is scientific and one is artistic, maybe? I don't actually know. I used to know. But the people who love this book love this book. And I've heard it's super weird and like that's where I'm hesitant because weird books and I sometimes work and sometimes don't. It really depends on what's happening. So I want to give this a shot because I love this author's stuff. And I'm actually really curious. Plus, it's a standalone, we think. I think there's actually going to be more in this series eventually, but, like, right now it's a standalone. There is a sequel to this book that comes out in 2022. Um, and there was a, like, side book. Because, like, there's a book of stories mentioned in this book. And so Sean McGuire created that into a separate book. So I'd like to check that out too if I like this one. But I love her writing. And this is like super hyped. And like a very niche book of like, if you like it, then you like it. And I kind of want to be one of those people. So those are the five books I'm planning on reading in this vlog. But I think I'm gonna start with Middle Game. Because I'm excited about that and the author. Don't know when I'm gonna start that. Maybe in the next few days. We'll see. I decided to start this in the month that I have like the most things to read for my TBR because I hate myself. So we'll see what happens, but that's my plan for this video. I hope you enjoy coming along on the journey with me. Let, let's see what happens. Hello. It's later. I've had a wardrobe change because that's who I am as a person. 
fun times. Um, but I needed to show you because I just got back from the library. Well, I didn't just get back from the library. I got back, I went to the library on my lunch break because they had my two books ready to pick up because they were already on the stacks. Um, so I picked up those th those two books. Tell me why all the books minus one that I picked are big ass books. Um, so this is over 500 pages. This is over 500 pages. This is over 500 pages. This one is not over 500 pages, but it's 480, so it's close enough. But like, y'all, I picked some big books. Why did I do this to myself? That's all. That's my update. I just wanted to tell you that I had all my books physically now, and they are gigantic, and I am scared. So this may take about 10 months to do. But you know, we're here for the ride, right? Like all the emotions and everything. This is what you signed up for. You're welcome. I don't actually know if that's what you signed up for, but I, I hope it's entertaining. What have I done? Hello, it's been a few days and it's late at night. I've already taken my makeup off. I've gotten for ready for bed and all that fun stuff and I realized I haven't updated you on my progress with middle game since I said I was gonna start it. Um, excuse you. So, I have started it. Um, I started it, I think, the day after I told you I was gonna start it. Um, and I'm already over halfway through with this book. It's good. <laughs> so where I'm at is like 60% of the way through, I think. And my first like 150 pages, I think, reminded me of how I felt when I was reading the fifth season. Because like, you're watching Roger and Dodger, who are these twins, and each of them have like specific powers. Roger is really good with words and languages and Dodger is really good with math and like figuring things out that way. And so this takes place over a good chunk of their life, I think, because it is kind of like a timeline because each chapter has like a specific time period and like place and like compared to where it was, like it could be something of like five years in the future from where you just read or it could be like the next day or it could be like the same time two hours later or something like they tell you that but it starts with them I think they're nine or ten maybe and it starts with the two of them kind of contacting each other for the first time and so you get their story you get kind of what's happening to them but then in between that you get these chapters from their like creator or this like scientist mastermind who's like has this plan but you don't know what this plan is but he's got this plan and so like they're saying these things and nothing is making sense and then at the same time you've got between these chapters bits and pieces from this fictional work in this book which is over the wood wood wall over the wood word wall that's what it is um and so you're getting that and so that i'm starting to think is starting to become important <laughs> because before it was just like you were getting these bits and pieces from a story and I was like this is great what does it mean you know um but I'm really enjoying it but like because I have all of these questions and like the parts with Roger and Dodger are really interesting and so like those parts make sense but every time we jump into the parts where we're kind of learning about what's going on with this creator and like his people that's when I get really confused but I'm starting to see here this close to the end where things are starting to click into place um just slightly so i'm not as confused as i was at the beginning and so i think that's why i'm so like this reminds me of my experience with the fifth season because that's what happened is it took me well over halfway for me to like i was enjoying it but i was still super confused and then things started clicking into place and that's kind of what i get with this so I'm very intrigued by what's happening. This hand on the cover is actually an important part of the story. And I don't understand what it is. Like we've seen it a couple of times, but I'm not sure like what's happening and what the point of it is. So I always like tr was trying to figure out like what this cover meant. But it's like part of the story. But I don't know what it means yet. <laughs> the other thing that I find super interesting about this book is it is for sure a sci-fi fantasy. There are definitely elements in here that you're like, there's no way that would happen in real life. But it's written like a contemporary. So it's written in a way that you feel like these characters are very, very real. You feel like the stuff that's happening to them is very, very real. But like logically, it can't happen because some of the things that are happening in here 
there's no way would happen in real life. So I find that super interesting as well. Um, I will say there's like a huge, huge trigger warning for suicide in this book. It's talked about a lot. Um, specifically with one character and like it's thought back on. So like it's the physical act is not on the page, but the character reliving it and thinking about it a lot is on the page. Them talking about it a lot is on the page. Um, so it's it's heavily part of the story. So be wary of that when you go into this. But this is very like science-based fantasy sci-fi, you know? And so like there's a lot of technology, there's a lot of science stuff because she, Dodger, is so math mind. You get a lot of that as well and the kind of like calculating situations, which is interesting. I think that with books like this that are just like straight up confusion for a large chunk of it, that's not my favorite. So if we get past, if I can get past that into the actual story where we're starting to piece things together, that's when I'm interested in what's happening. And that's where we're at here. So I'm excited. We're learning things about these people. We're learning things about the creator and his team. And like, I need to know. So I'm excited about this. This is, I'm not sure I would have picked this up. Maybe I would have because I do like this author's other things and I've never read anything like this before. I think this is adult or maybe it's new adult. I'm not entirely sure. I would say adult, I think, uh, cause of just some of the situations and like the darker subject matter of this book. But it's very good. I'm enjoying it so far. I expect the next time I talk to you, I will have finished it. I don't know when that's gonna be, but I expect that that will be the next time I speak to you. But so far, so good. It's a good start. Hello. Um, so I just wanted to update you really quickly because I've got a couple of minutes really quick. I need to like go to work, but I was able to wake up a couple of minutes early today. So I've got a little, a little bit of time, but I finished middle game last night. It's been, I can't think a couple of days since I've talked to you about this. No. Yeah, it's been a couple of days since I talked to you about this, but I finished it last night. It was very good. I gave it four stars. So my overall feelings are very similar, like the same feelings I had when I updated you last. I have them now. Um, I liked the ending. My thing with this book is there is a sequel to this that's not coming out until the end of next year. So like we don't even have a synopsis of what that book's going to be about. We just have a title, which I don't even remember. Um, and I feel like I'm good. Like this book ended the way I wanted it to. It still had some up in the air questions, but I felt like those were questions that didn't need to be answered. I felt like we were good. I got what I wanted from the story and I feel like I don't need to read the sequel. So the sequel needs to either have an amazing synopsis or be about a different character. But like, as of right now, I feel like I'm good. I am a little curious in the collection of like, not short stories, but the short children's book that is your given pieces throughout this book. Um, Shana McGuire has written it as Deborah Baker, which is the author in this book, um, who wrote that. And so, like, I am a little curious about that because I feel like if I had read that, I would understand a lot more because I'm still very confused. I feel like I missed a lot still. Like, I feel like I understood enough to get to where I need to be, but there is so much more that I just, I don't understand and I didn't pick up on. So I feel like this book needs a reread in order for me to collect everything. But at the same time, I'm okay. You know, like it wasn't bad. I enjoyed this book, clearly. I gave it four stars, but it's not my new favorite. It's not the most hyped book that I think is worth the hype. I think if you enjoy weird things, if you enjoy kind of logical scientific fantasy books, this gave me lots of like mad scientist vibes. If you enjoy stuff like that, then you will definitely enjoy this book. If you enjoy being confused for a lot of the book, you'll enjoy this book. I do not like being confused for a lot of the book. I like being given things throughout the book. So like I can be confused on, on things, but like I still want information from the beginning and you're just kind of like thrown into it without knowing anything, um, which makes sense for the story they're trying to tell. But I personally was like, you know, I want to know. And they waited until like the last hundred pages to really tell us what's going on. And I was like, I feel like, I feel like I, I wanted to know at least some of that before. So it's not, a, it's, I'm making it sound like it was really bad and it was a disappointment because it's not, I did enjoy it. I just feel like for me personally, this, was good and I don't know if I would have picked it up without the hype but I'm not sure it's worth the hype for me personally but I did enjoy it and I feel like I'm good the story has been told I did love our characters Roger and Dodger they're so sweet I love them 
Um, and I'm good. Like this, this one and done standalone that has now been turned into a series. It felt like the standalone was good and like there was, I didn't need any more story. So I really enjoyed this, gave it four stars. I think I'm going to do my other library book, which is Strange the Dreamer by Lady Taylor, just because I think the writing is going to be super different. And also I just want to know what this is about. Um, I, there's a lot of like fandom, like merch and stuff for this book and I don't understand it, but like I think there's people in this book that like have blue skin and all I can think about is Avatar and I need, I just need to know. But I'm excited to see it nonetheless. I'm really excited to see if Lady Taylor's writing is for me because she's been kind of explained as like super lyrical. Very interested. I'm like what that's going to be. So I have no idea when I'm going to pick this one up. It might be many, many weeks until you see me next. But I mean it'll be seconds for you. But for me it might be many, many weeks before I pick this up. But we'll see. But this is my plan is to pick this one up next. I'm excited though. Let's see what happens. Hello. I don't even know when the last time I talked to you was. Probably well over a week. But I've officially started Strange the Dreamer. And not only have I started Strange the Dreamer, I'm this far into it. Goodreads says I'm 80% or 85% of the way through. I feel much closer to the end than that. Um, but I do have thoughts. So I didn't have a whole lot of thoughts when I first started this book beyond the fact that I was, I'm so sorry, it's super reflective. So if I blind you, I apologize. Um, ah, I just blinded myself. All I really had any kind of opinion on at the beginning of this book when I started it was that I was enjoying it. The plot surrounding Laszlo Strange was very interesting to me. I wanted to know more about him. The one thing I will say about this is this has been described it's like really well known, I feel like, for its writing and how it's very, very lyrical. I would say I've read significantly more lyrical books than this. Like the writing is pretty, like you can envision what's happening on the page, but like it's not overly lyrical. It doesn't feel like it's this big thing that I've been led to believe it is. It feels like it's just another book. Like, I don't feel like there's anything special about the writing, I guess is the way that I say it. And I feel like a lot of people love this book for the writing. And I'm over here like, I just want to know what's happening to these characters. Like, writing schmiding. I want the plot. That's why I'm here. So I was a little disappointed on that because I thought it was going to be this, like, r ridiculously flowery, lyrical thing. And it's really not. But I'm obsessed with this plot. I so want to know what's going to happen. I don't even know what it was, but I was watching some video where this book came up and they were talking about how this ends on a huge cliffhanger. And I'm scared because I'm going to want to continue. It's only a duology, which is good. That means I only have to kind of dedicate to one more book. When am I going to get to that? I don't know. But if it's like a really, really big cliffhanger and I'm going to have to put everything on pause to get to the sequel, we got have some issues. Um, but I am really enjoying it. Like I said, the plot is really driving this forward for me. I'm very interested in Laszlo Strange and his exploration. Um, now that I've read this, I do kind of have a better idea of what this book is about. We do follow a guy named Laszlo Strange who is an orphan and he kind of grew up in a monastery and that's why he was given that name and that's he's known as Strange the Dreamer because he's very like head in the clouds. He's obsessed with this town that is believed to be mythical, I think, um, called Weep. Now that's not its real name. Its real name was kind of erased from everyone's memories, including the people from Weep, and they just call it Weep now. He used to know what it was and he doesn't anymore. And then he ends up working as a librarian in a library. And librarians are thought of like super low compared to like scholars. Scholars are like way up there and he's just thought as like a lowly librarian, which is very annoying to me. But He's just thought as a, a librarian and then a bunch of people from this mythical town of Weep show up in their village and basically say, hey, we've got a problem. We need your help. We need your best scholars, your best philosophers, all of this stuff. And Laszlo kind of weasels his way into this group of people. But there's a lot more to it. And there's a lot more with dreams and like the second half of the book. And that part is fascinating to me. The whole situation surrounding his dreams and I can't even tell you anything beyond that. But like that whole situation, that is so cool. 
Um, I'm, I love it so much. I think it's laid out very well where you're introducing the characters at the right times because I think part one is in Laszlo's perspective or in kind of in Laszlo's brain and then when you get to part two we meet this girl who is blue it's kind of like shows up in his dreams and she's mentioned in the blurb here. I think that they're introduced very conveniently so like you get to know Laszlo a little bit his story and then we introduce her and then their like stories intertwine and it's so good. I am enjoying the plot a whole lot. I'm really glad that I read it. I've only got less than 100 pages, I want to say. I'm on 462, and there are 532 pages left in the book. But that's my thoughts on it. I'm really enjoying it. I'm flying through it. But again, I'm a little disappointed by the writing, so I thought the writing was going to be this incredible thing. And it's really not, in my opinion, but the story is everything. I'm so here for the story. So I'm very intrigued. And I like it a lot. I expect this to be a four star. That's my prediction. Unless something crazy happens in the last little bit, which I'm expecting it to, um, that'll bump it up like crazy. This is, those are my thoughts. I'm so sorry I keep blinding you. I'm gonna put this book down now, but I'll come back to you when I finished it. Hello, it's the next day. I have updates for you. I finished Strange the Dreamer. Um, I actually finished this last night because things happened that kept me on the edge of my seat for the last 90 pages, I think is what we decided. So I finished this last night and I'm just haven't had time to talk to you until now. I had been led to believe that this is a huge cliffhanger and that this is basically like a story split in half and this is just where the first book ends is like halfway through the story. I felt like there there's a cliffhanger for sure. I definitely want to continue with the series. I need to know what's going to happen in the second book. But it wasn't so much of a cliffhanger where I'm like, oh my god, I need the second one immediately or I will not be able to continue with my life. It's one of those that, like, I can wait a little bit and I'll be okay. So I, I want to continue. Like I said, I definitely think that I'm super curious with where this is going to go because there's been, like a, like, a villain character in my brain this entire time and I feel like we really get to see that come out in the last, like, 10 pages of this book so I'm very curious what the plan is and also there's this huge mystery surrounding Laszlo himself that got revealed at the end which I knew something was going to happen I didn't guess what it did end up happening but I did know something was up with him um and his lineage a little bit and we definitely got answers to that which made me happy I'm glad we didn't you know that was solved and we don't have that to like wait till the second one to figure out but i thought this was really good again i don't think it is kind of like how i felt about middle game i don't think like i don't want to say it's not worth the hype because it is i still gave it four stars maybe even four and a half stars i think i gave it four and a half stars so i still really enjoyed it however it's not my new favorite book it's not a book that like has completely changed my life forever. So like, I want to continue. I'm so glad I'm in the know, but is it hyped? Is it worth the hype? Maybe. It's very interesting. It's It feels very, I don't know, like it feels very YA fantasy and adult fantasy world, if that makes any sense. But there's aspects of this plot that fascinate me and I'm super glad that I read it. This all sounds very negative. I'm very glad that I read it. But it's not one of the books that, like, I've now been forever changed, where has this been all my life kind of books, you know? Same thing with Middle Game. I have a suspicious feeling, unless the last two were fantastic, or the last few were, few were fantastic, that might be a theme throughout this vlog, but I'm glad that I read this one. So, two down of the five that I'm planning, I think the next one I'm going to pick up is The Deep by Rivers Solomon. That one I have on ebook as well as audiobook, so I'm hoping to read and listen at the same time. But it's super short, so I'll try to come talk to you when I've started it to give you an idea of what I'm thinking right as I'm starting it, but it's so short that I might finish it in one sitting, and the next time you see me is when I'll be done with it. I don't know when that's going to be. I still have a few books like for my regular monthly TBR that I want to get to before I get to that one. So we'll see, but I'm very interested in that one. It's super short. 
It's not the happiest of books. It's about a girl who's like the memory keeper. So she keeps all of these horrific memories for her, you know, group of people. So I'm not sure what I'm getting into with that, but I'm interested. We're going to try that one out next. Kind of break up the big books with a, with a smaller one in between. But uh, I'll come talk to you guys when I have started that one. Or finished it. Who knows? Hello! It is a long time <laughs> since I've talked to you. But I wanted to come on here and update you just a tiny bit because I started the next book, which is The Deep by Rivers Solomon. I ran out of audiobooks to listen to. I'm currently participating in the Do the Thingathon, which is hosted by Ashley from Frolicsy Fiction. Um, I'm actually vlogging for that as well. But I finished the two audiobooks I had planned for that, and I just really wanted to start another one. And this one is pretty short, so I can get it in before the end of the month. And it is technically part of, you know, my goals for the year, which was to do more secretive TBR videos. Uh, but I did want to come on here and tell you that I've started it. I am three chapters in. I have it on Kindle. And I'm also listening to the audiobook, which fun fact, the one I have, I don't know if it's like the only one, but the one I have is narrated by Debbie Diggs, which just makes me so happy because A, I love him. Uh, his voice is magic and like he just is so expressive. And B, because he's one of the people who wrote the song that this book is based on. Now, I haven't listened to the song, but I'm hoping to finish this book and then find it online somewhere and listen to it because I'm very curious. But I don't want it to, I don't want to listen to the song and then be reading the book and focusing on what parts of the book are taken from the song when I can just read the story and really get enveloped in this and kind of what it means and then go listen to the song afterwards. But I am on chapter three, which is about 17% of the way through the book. Not too far yet, but I am getting, I, I love this. And I don't know if it's River Solomon's writing, which I'm sure it is, or if it's Devi Diggs's expressive way of talking, but this is such an immersive story and I'm just barely into it. We follow our main character who is the historian for her I don't even know what the right word is. I don't want to say clan. I don't want to say tribe, but like it's it's her her group of people. And the historian's job is to have all of the memories. And once a year, they share those memories with the rest of their group of people because the clan's whole thing is to forget. Um, focus so much on living your life that you're not kind of bogged down from the past. And so the historian keeps everything in and then shares it once a year so that you can experience and kind of like remember and know where you come from, but then like forget it again. But that's such a hard experience and very, very traumatic for the historian because they have to live with these horrible memories, both good and bad, but primarily all of the traumatic memories of all of their ancestors. And so our main character, I believe you pronounce it yet to, she is the historian and she's super young and she's having a really hard time with this. And it's a couple of days before this ceremony and she's late this year. And so she has to share all these memories with her uh, family. She's not looking forward to it because it's very, very taxing, very, very draining on her. And like she gets the kind of, she gets a break from everything where she kind of can forget all of that for a couple of days while everyone else is absorbed in these memories, but then they all come back to her. And she's very, it seems like she's very sensitive to a lot of stuff that's happening. And so she can get lost in memories and like touch specific items and those like bring back all these memories and she can get lost in them for hours, which apparently is like a, a no-no for the historian is to get completely lost in these memories, but it's very difficult for her. So I'm very interested to see where this is going to go. I think it's going to talk a lot about trauma. I don't really know as far as the plot where this is going to go. I feel like she's going to go off on her own. But like that's kind of the historian's job is to just kind of like search the ocean all year long and then come back and share everything. So like that's her getting all these this information, all these new memories. But that's very taxing on her. So I think we're going to do a lot of talking about trauma. I expect it to be very tough to get through but a very important book to get through. I'm excited because it is one of the 
well, it's basically my only short book that I have planned in this little TBR, but it's one that I've been meaning to get to for such a long time. And I think having that immersive experience of having the person, one of the people who wrote the songs do the, the narration for this book is just an, an incredible kind of like circle of life moment. Uh, so I'm just, I'm loving it so far, even though I'm not very far into it. I am not really sure what we're going to get into, but I did want to mention that I have technically started it and I will continue to read it. Uh, I don't know if it'll take me a couple of days. Hopefully I'll be done by the end of this weekend, if not early next week. And uh, I'll let you know my thoughts when I have them. Hello. It's been a few days since I spoke to you last. I definitely finished The Deep a few, the beginning of this week, I want to say. So it's been a few days since I finished that, but I haven't had time to come tell you. And I was sitting down recording a video. So here I am to talk to you about it. Uh, this was very good. I think I gave it four stars, if I remember correctly. Uh, there's definitely a ton of stuff that I missed. I think there's a lot of kind of symbolic things that happen in this book and a lot of like layers to this book that like my very straight white self didn't pick up on. So I think that there's definitely some other stuff to this book that a reread would maybe help me pick up on. I thought it was like it was an incredible story. I liked the kind of idea because I know this isn't an original idea for this author as far as like a world where like the you know, pregnant women who were on slave ships were thrown overboard and their, you know, kids kind of grew up in the water and have now become this kind of like mermaid siren. I would say more of a mermaid race. And so like that part of the story didn't come from this author. I think it came from, I was trying to remember what the the author at the very back of the book said, because this book is based on a song by Davy Diggs and a couple other people. And then that song is based on this story that was created by somebody else. But I still really enjoyed this. Like I said, I think I missed a lot to this book. I was trying to pay attention. I don't think I paid attention as well as I needed to for this. I also do not think that I am the target audience for this book. So I'm like, I just keep that in mind. Like I'm not the reviewer that you need to be listening to about this book. So definitely go like find other people. I know Jesse from Bowties and Books read this book at some point, I think last year. So I would go check out other reviews of this because I don't actually have that much to say because it is so short. I did enjoy the story. I enjoyed watching this, our main character, just kind of figuring out who she is because it does deal with trauma. She just wants a break and so she kind of runs away in the middle of this book and it's her just kind of like meeting people who have lost their family and have no way to remember their group of people and so it's her kind of coming to terms with her role and then her group of people, her family kind of understanding, who's never really understood why she has such a hard time with being the historian, kind of understanding that more now that they have those memories. And so it's it's very, I think, eye-opening for our main character. It's very interesting to watch her kind of story progress throughout this book. And I think it was fascinating. I do think that it can be worth the hype for the right person if this book sounds interesting because it is like I said very much about trauma and that kind of thing uh but again I don't think I'm the target audience but I still really enjoyed it I gave it four stars so that's very exciting I've now finished three oh I can count three out of the five books so I've got two more which I can promise you I'm not going to get to in in June just because of the amount of craziness that I'm doing in June so not do that in June but I expect in July to hopefully pick these up I think the next one I'm going to end up picking up is uh, A Curse So Dark and Lonely. This is kind of a Beauty and the Beast retelling. I know this is the first in a trilogy. It's, I don't know, something about this is giving me the same idea or vibes that I think Akatar gave me. So I'm kind of, I'm in that mood. I want that kind of stuff. So I'm going to, I think, pick this one up next. I know it's a ton of people's favorites. I know a lot of people either love it or hate it. And I feel like I'm going to be in the love camp that I want. I want to know, you know? So I think this is going to be the next one that I pick up. I do have an audiobook of it on Audible, so I think I'm going to do it that way. But I'll come to you next when I have actually picked it up, which I do not think will be any time soon. I think it'll be in July. But yeah, that's my next read. 
Hello, it's me coming to you. I have no idea how long it's been since the last time I talked to you. Uh, yes, I've had a haircut since I talked to you. I'm in love with it. Uh, but I'm here because I did actually start one of the last two books that I need to finish, although it is not the one I was planning. I actually ended up starting The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue today. Uh, I've got both Addie LaRue and A Curse of Dark and Lonely on my July TBR, so I have plans to read them this month. I've started this one. I'm 145-ish pages in, according to Goodreads. That is 26% of the way through this book. Uh, I listened to all of it today. I, I started this book today. Um, and I already love this so much more than the other book that I read by V. E. Schwab, which was a dark, uh, dark Shade of Magic, the first in that trilogy. Uh, this, I love the writing. The writing is so lyrical and beautiful, and like I don't remember having any strong feelings about the writing and like when I read her other book. Uh, so first off, fantastic on that score. So the writing, spectacular. Uh, what I'm loving a lot about this is that this is told in kind of a dual timeline because this, I'm sure many people know, but like The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue follows, follows this woman named Addie LaRue who makes a deal with this dark figure, basically, and she can live forever and live freely and not be tied down, but everybody will forget her and she can't make like a mark on the world. So she like tries drawing and writing on pieces of paper and it starts to disappear, that kind of thing. I do know that there's there's a bookshop owner or a bookshop clerk that remembers her. We haven't gotten to that part yet, but we have met him uh, for the first time. So that's kind of where we are on that timeline, which is the 2014? Yes, 2014 timeline. Uh, so that's like the, the modern present day timeline. And then you also see this other timeline, which is like 1714, 1715 in France and it's her life before the deal. Well, that's how, that's where it starts. And so then you see her kind of like make this deal um, and then learn how to deal with this deal in the first like a little bit right after she makes it because where she is now, she's like hundreds and hundreds of years old. And so she knows how to deal with it. She knows what things she has to do in situations so that the outcome is okay. Um, and that like she can stay and do certain things. Uh, so, whereas, like, the past timeline is kind of figuring all of us out. So I love that dual timeline. Sometimes the dual timeline doesn't always work for me, but I really like it here because not only are we seeing the present day plot, which I feel like is going to be the main plot point, like, this fact that this guy is going to remember her is, like, the big climax part of this book, but I, I, I'm assuming from my very tiny, you know, part that I've read so far, but I also love seeing past Addie and how she becomes this Addie, especially like what causes her to create this deal. And I like having those dual timelines rather than just like random flashbacks uh, where we find that out. I like the, I like seeing her figure it out as well. I think that's really interesting. So I'm, I'm loving this so far. It's so good. So I'm really glad that I did end up giving this one a shot. I don't know if it's going to be a full five star, but this is definitely, from my very tiny part so far, I would say it's worth it. Uh, just because I've heard a lot of people say that this is not very, like, this is very different from her past work. And that's what I was holding out hope for because I didn't like her past work. And so I was really nervous. But I think this is great. I expect so much more heartache to come because the fact that she can't be remembered is like, heart-wrenching especially like right after she makes this deal and she goes back to her family for the first time and like tries to get back to her life uh, she doesn't realize what kind of deal she's made and seeing her parents just kind of like freak out and like all of her friends not remember her and just all of like her life just fall apart um so i would say trigger warnings so far trigger warnings for i don't know just overall grossness maybe <laughs> uh because people assume that she is a prostitute um because of how she is dressed because she is just kind of like stumbling around and sometimes people want more from her and she has to kind of like push them away uh, so i wouldn't say full-on sexual assault but like not happiness about some of the situations that she gets herself in so i'm gonna try to plow through a lot of this tomorrow 
Um, I work from home tomorrow, so I'm hoping to kind of have that going while I'm working because Fridays are pretty chill for me. So I'm hoping that I can get this one done in the next couple of days. I don't really have any plans this weekend, so it would be fantastic to get this done. Uh, but yeah, I I wasn't sure at first. When I first got into the book, I was like, this, this is, you know, like I'm not hating my time, but I'm not invested yet. And so right about the time we got the first or second flashback uh, was right about the time when I was like, okay, especially when we saw her start to grow up a little bit because it starts when she's like eight, I think, and then she grows up a little bit and then her mom wants her to get married. And then that's like kind of where things spiral from there. But I love it so much so far. So I have so much more story to go. I don't know where this could go. I literally have no idea. And I've heard this is going to break me. So I am prepared for the tears. That's why I want to finish this on the weekend so that if, you know, there are tears, no one will see. <laughs> Good choice. I'm a happy human so far. Hello. I am here on... Oh, I haven't marked my calendar. I have no idea what day it is. Wednesday. Uh, I don't remember when I came to you last to tell you that I was starting The Visible Life of Addie LaRue. I think it was the end of last week. I might be wrong. I was going to come to you earlier this week to tell you things, but then I just loved it and I finished it. So we're here to talk about it. <laughs> um, I think this one, first off, first off, I was in the tiniest bit of a reading slump where I was still reading, but like, I wasn't enjoying reading. I was just kind of reading to hopefully get out of the slump. And this did it. This got me. And now I just want to keep reading things. I'm currently in the middle of a contemporary that is fantastic. Um, but this pulled me out of a slump. And this got five stars. This is so worth the hype, in my opinion. This has been my favorite read of this vlog so far. And there have been some really good reads, but by far, this is my favorite. I was really invested. I was really liking it. Like, I think I came to you earlier and told you that, like, I was liking this much better than some of the other things, like, previous things that I've read by this author. And it was really good, but, like, I wasn't really an, too far into the story to really have an opinion, besides the fact that the story and the writing was better, in my opinion. It's very lyrically written, not as in, like, this is super flowery language, but this girl, or this woman, Addie LaRue, really kind of surrounds herself with artists, painters, musicians, composers, like, people like that. So it's very kind of that style as well. I also, if I can remember the name, I'll put it up on the screen, but the person who narrated the audiobook, because I did listen and read at the same time, well, I mostly listened, but I read along a little bit, is incredible. Oh my gosh, she was so good, because not only was she able to do all of these voices, but our main character, Addie, was born in France, and so she's got a very thick French accent, and then, and the more modern stuff, she has a very... Like, it's still there a little bit, but it's not nearly there as much, and you only notice it on a few words. And this actress was able to do it depending on what was happening in the story. And as you see the dual timelines of, like, the present Addie and the past Addie, as the past Addie kind of comes to meet the present Addie, the accent becomes less and less because she's lived longer in other places beyond France. And... She's lived in the U.S. for a while, so she's getting an American accent. And so, like, her French accent is just kind of, like, slowly going away. And the, oh my gosh, it was so good. I can't even explain to you how incredible this narrator was. And she did it so well. It was, it was so great. But I was really enjoying this. It wasn't, like, my next favorite read. But I was really enjoying this until we got to the point where we found out why the bookstore clerk whose name is Henry was able to remember Addie and then I was hooked. I was hooked from that moment on and I just like devoured the end and I probably shouldn't have done this but I listened to the very last like 50 to 100 pages of this today at work and I can't tell you how hard it was for me to like force myself to not cry in the middle of my office because it, oh, it, it tugs at your heartstrings. Um, not in a necessarily sad way, just in a, I don't even, like, I don't want to say too much because I don't want to spoil it, but there's this thing that happens in books with me where it's all of these kind of, like, 
goodbye moments and that doesn't mean like someone is dying it could be something as simple as someone is graduating high school and they like realize that they and their friends are not going to be as close as they were because they're going to different colleges or something like just as an example um and so like that goodbye before they go off to college those kind of goodbye situations break me um without fail so things happened um but i think this was written so well i loved watching Addie um and henry get to like kind of just get their relationship going especially once they realize a that he can remember her b when he realizes that other people can't and c when we figure out why that is and then also the kind of like dark person the person she made this deal with she calls luke um as in like short for lucifer but like that's what she calls him so he's a big part of this as well and so it's very interesting seeing this god be very human as well so it just had all of these different incredible layers and i loved it and the ending was so perfect because it's not wrapped up but it's also like it's, it's an ending it's definitely an ending but there's this hint of you can make up where the story goes from here kind of because i don't think there's going to be a second in this and i feel like there shouldn't be i feel like this is a good standalone this is this is it but it's left off in a way that's almost kind of like well there could be more but you have to you as the reader can decide what that is going to be um and there's also a mini kind of mini trope which you don't realize until the end of a kind of a book within a book a little bit so i will leave that there because i really like how they did this this is very similar in my opinion to if you've read autobiography by christina lauren how that book is laid out that's very similar to this book as well but it was so good i just realized i still have my bookmark in it but it was really good i loved it oh my god it's so worth the hype i understand why people really really enjoy this and I'm so surprised because of past experiences with this author it just didn't work for me and I think she wrote it differently for these characters and I think it worked really well. So I'm so, uh, uh, it was so good. So I'm so happy with this. Um, I kind of want to read it again. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm a happy human. So I did it. That one is complete. The first five star of this video. And the first, in my opinion, that is really, really worth the hype. I think the others are good and worth, like, the attention they're getting. But I think this one is worth the hype. So, perfection. Uh, but yeah, that leaves one more book, which is, like, Curse So Dark and Lonely. Which I will be getting to... I'm, like I said, I'm in the middle of a, like, very fun contemporary romance. So I want to finish that first. But this will either be start at the end of this week or at the beginning of next week i haven't decided there's still about a week left in the month so i've got plenty of time to read this before the end of the month which is my goal i'm excited because i give it, i don't know what it is but something about this book is giving me akatar vibes i don't know why maybe because it's beauty and the beast that's honestly probably what it is but i'm very curious to see a lot of people really really love this and also i believe the author has just announced that she's adding to this series a little bit yeah i've heard people really love the first one and then are iffy on the second two so i'm excited to go into this one but i feel bad for this because it has to come after addy and addy was just so dang good so we'll see we're gonna finish this vlog strong hopefully with a very lovely fantasy beauty and the beast retelling I'm excited. Ugh. This was, ugh. Perfection. This is just perfection. Hello. Um, I'm here with updates because I've started A Curse So Dark and Lonely. And I meant to update you before this, but, well, life. Um, but I'm a little over halfway through the book. I'm somewhere in chapter 30, which is about 250. So a little over halfway. And I'm really enjoying it. This is giving me some of the same... I don't even, like, I kind of get Akatar feelings. I think that's because this is based on Beauty and the Beast, just like that one is. And I'm getting, I don't know, I don't, I can't, like, think of anybody, but, like, there, what did I read recently? Oh, she kind of reminds me a little bit of Addie LaRue, um, our main character, Harper, because she's just kind of, like, sticking up for herself and not taking any crap from anybody. And I feel like Addie LaRue did that, especially when she was talking to, like, the dark character the devil character if you will from that book um so i like the rapport in this book but 
I don't know if I ever talked about what this is about, but it is a Beauty and the Beast retelling, but it follows our main character, Harper, who has cerebral palsy, and she is kind of just hanging out, waiting on her brother to do something at the beginning of this book, and she sees a man kidnap this woman and kind of, like, make her unconscious, and she's like, excuse me, no. And so she goes to attack him with, like, a bat, like, I don't even know, like, a bat, or, like, some kind of iron thing that she found on the ground, and he ends up taking her instead to this other land. And so that person was Grey, who was the commander knight person for Ren, who is the beast character, the prince. So he's the one who's been cursed, he's the beast character, and he has been cursed to have someone fall in love with him. And then if that person doesn't, the season restarts over. So it's like he has fall over and over. I think it's fall. Maybe it's spring. Um, over and over again. Whereas the rest of the world outside of the castle continues, you know, on. And this is his like 315th year or something. And this is the person who cursed him kind of keeps showing up. And she's told him this is her last year. and Or this is his last year. Or season, I guess you could say. Um, and so he's... And, like, it's it's fascinating. I love the banter between them. I also completely understand why people say Grey, who is the commander character, is, like, they sh they love him. They ship him with Harper. I totally get it. I still think I like Harper and Ren. Like, the two of them are super cute. I'm on board for them. But I totally get why people like Grey. He's definitely my favorite character so far. And at first, I didn't have any, like, strong opinions about it. But the more that I've been reading it, the more I really like the two of them. Harper and Rin. I like the two of them together. I think the curse is fascinating. The evil human witch person, I can't even remember what she is, but the person who curses him um, really reminds me of Amarantha from Akatar, except for that you see her throughout the entire book. She's not just kind of like the, the villain who's been hiding until the end, which is kind of what happened in Akatar. Um, whereas with this, she just kind of keeps showing up and she's awful, like utterly horrendous to everybody. I like it. I don't have any strong feelings right now. It's just kind of like, I'm really enjoying this. I can see this being a four star, but again, we're only about halfway through, so I'm not entirely sure where we could go with this. I thought this was going to be just kind of like a Beauty and the Beast plot where he tries to convince her to love him. Whereas What's actually happening is he's trying to save his kingdom because he doesn't think that she's going to fall in love with him. She's even told him, like, I'm never going to fall for you. Um, but he's told her about the curse, most of it. There's parts of it. Um, there's this whole thing with a monster that the reader knows what's happening with that, but the rest of them don't. And Harper doesn't know the monster portion of this curse. But that's going to probably cause some issues near the end, I'm thinking. But this is the first in a trilogy, so I'm wondering if we're going to get like an actual finished story with this one, kind of how like Akatar could be a standalone, whereas the rest of it can't. Um, I'm wondering if we're going to do something very similar to this. I don't know. It's very good. I'm enjoying it. Um, like I said, I'm over halfway through. I've got three days, including today, left in the month. Um, so I work from home today and tomorrow. And then we're doing something on the weekend. So I'm hoping to get this done before the weekend because I will not have time on the weekend to read this. But considering I've got this much left, and I think according to my audiobook, based on the speed that I'm going. I've only got four hours left, so I should be good to go. But I'm enjoying it. I really am. I kind of, I feel like I sound like I'm not enjoying it. I am. It's not my new favorite thing of all time. It kind of reminds me of a lot of other kind of YA books that I've read, so it doesn't seem, I guess, original is the word I'm looking for. But I'm still really enjoying this, and I'm excited to see because, like, the second half could totally change. There is definitely this plot of, like, it's almost a fake dating plot. I mean, not really. Um, Harper's pretending to be this princess of DC, because she's from DC. <laughs> um, and it's kind of showing as like the possibly to be betrothed to Ren. And so like, she's helping him kind of get his world back in order. And so he's, she's helping him kind of protect his world when he's gone and his kingdom and things like that from people like invaders. And so that is an interesting plot because it's not really fake dating. It's not really um, arranged marriage or anything like that, which are tropes that I really do enjoy. But it has similarities to that where they have to pretend to be kind of like a thing. Um, so it's kind of fun. But I also just really like their banter and, you know, the slowly thawing of this prince character, which is one of my favorite things to read, is in The Hate to Love is like the slow thaw of 
the characters into liking each other. So it's kind of fun. I like, I just, I like the tension between the two of them. So I'm excited to see where this is gonna go. Like I said, I expect this to be a four, four and a half, probably a four star, unless something incredible happens in the last half, which is possible. Um, but yeah, I probably won't come back and talk to you until I'm done with this book, just because... I feel like I'm just gonna plow through this and there's not gonna be really any updates to it. So, good times, very happy I am reading it and we'll talk to you when I have more things to say, probably when I have finished. Hello, I'm here because I have officially finished A Curse So Dark and Lonely, as well as this vlog, so I'm here to wrap everything up. But I, what was I, a little over halfway when I talked to you last? and I, I finished it. Um, this was so good. This ended up getting four and a half stars, so not a full five star, but I was looking at Kofile, which is how I do my star ratings, and like even point one more on anything that I had put would put it at a five star. So it's like as close to a five star as you can get. But four and a half feels really accurate to me because the second half of the story is where it really shined for me. The end was so action-packed and quick, 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 and I wasn't sure how we were going to wrap up some of the things with Harper's family, who was in, like, our world. Um, and so I had a feeling they might do a couple of things that they did, and I really appreciated that, and I liked seeing kind of the conclusion of some of the stuff in the her home world. Um, but there's this whole thing I can't even tell you about but there's this thing that kind of came up near the end and I was like oh is she go she's not gonna do this thing that I think she's gonna do by making this person be this other person um and then she did and I'm shook because so I have gone on and bought the rest of the series <laughs> but this is so good I understand the hype I do I get it um but yeah, so we got four and a half because the beginning portion of this story was, I wouldn't say boring because it wasn't. It, it was doing things and I was into the story, but it wasn't anything original or spectacular and it wasn't kind of keeping me, it wasn't making it a new favorite. And then the second part of this world book came along and it's great. So I am nervous going into the rest of the series because I've heard the rest of the series is where it gets iffy for some people, but I did it. I did it. It's great. I loved it. I just, yeah, this plot really just kind of like moved really quickly and kept me on the edge of my seat. I don't think the writing was anything spectacular. However, the plot was fantastic and I'm more of a plot person anyway. So. I really liked this. I'm going to continue with this series for sure. I wasn't sure going into this if I wanted to just read this one, um, whether it was going to wrap up or not. And it kind of does where it wraps up this story, but there's still some overarching questions. And then there's an epilogue that kind of like brings other questions into it. So this is very good. I don't think I need the second one right away, but part of me wants to read it right away. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, I've officially finished this. And for me, it was worth the hype. I definitely agree. So I don't know what the moral of this video is. Um, some things hyped work for me and some don't. Maybe I should read more out of my comfort zone is maybe where this came from because my favorite was the Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, which was the one that I was the most worried about, and it was the best one. Um, and then my second favorite was this one, which I put off for a long time, because I was, you know, after having people read the second and third one in the series, not a lot of people loved those, and so I was a little iffy getting invested in this. But I want to see my own reactions to them. So this is one and two as far as favorites. I think after that, I would say Strange the Dreamer was really good. Uh, that one got four stars. Then I think The Deep and Middle Game are tied for fourth, to be honest. Uh, but I really did enjoy this. So I think this worked out pretty well. Um, everything in this video got at least four stars. So I don't know. Is it worth the hype? I would say yes for these two. I would say yes for 
um, <clears throat> middle game if, if your thing is like weird books. I would say yes for The Deep if you want something that's going to make you think a lot. And I would say yes for Strange the Dreamer if you want a just kind of very different fantasy world. Um, so I'd say these two definitely and Strange the Dreamer were my favorites out of this video. But I'm really glad that I did this because I've read books that I've wanted to read for a while or been interested in and kind of been putting off because I'm a little nervous about them and they ended up all being pretty daggum good. So I'm going to call this a success. Success. Wow, I can't say that word. I'm going to call this a success and I hope you guys enjoyed. Did you, have you read any of the books that I have mentioned in this vlog? Did they live up the hype for you? Let me know your thoughts down below or did this video make you want to read one of these books? I hope so. Oh, because everyone should read this one. Just, I'm just going to say, just saying, just saying. But with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below if you want to be part of this awesome growing family. I've also got all my social media as well as other fun bookish links down there. So don't forget to check all of those out. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.